Okay, this is part two for the SIJ. Part one, we worked on some mobilization, the clinic, and some stretching at home. This one, we're working on strengthening work that the patient could just try and stabilize the joint, reduce the pain, get the glutes stronger, get the whole thing better. So when we're dealing with the SIJ, so if we're looking at the right one here, the gluteus maximus is one of the major ones that's gonna help stabilize that because it comes straight from here, okay? You've also got a bit of glute me, which helps stabilize the pelvis laterally, but also works on the hip. So that's important too. And we're gonna to go through some exercises to involve glute and that glute mead, or the glute max and glute mead. But what's also sometimes missing from a lot of programs is connecting those sort of glute muscles through the lumbar fascia to the lat and that posterior oblique sling. So we'll work on that as well. And that really makes a difference to try and lock that down. Because it's all well and good just using the glute, but if you can connect that over like that with the fascia system through that thoracolumbar fascia through there, you get that diagonal cross section here, you'll get way more stability through here, way better outcomes. So with all these exercises, what I'm gonna work through is sort of from sort of start to sort of finish in a little set of exercises. So we're gonna work on the warm up stuff and the activation work before we do the harder stuff. So we're gonna start with those boring old exercises, clams. Now you've seen clams before and I've gone through many videos of this. So we're gonna run through this just briefly, but with her clam, she's gotta be thinking, or we've gotta be thinking, I want the glute max to be working into external rotation with this, all right? So the best way to activate that is to get her brain talking to her heels, okay? Keeping her pelvis stable by switching on her core and keeping that toned in there because we don't want this moving around, okay? There's no point of trying to do glute work if her pelvis is shifting around. So she's really gonna make sure that her core's on and core is part of these SIJ issues anyway. So that needs to be working here. She needs to be thinking about being stable here. The other thing she's gotta think about when she pushes her heels, is she's got to try and think about sandwiching her heels together. So before she even moves that knee into a clam position, the heels have got to be pushing together. So bottom heel into top heel, the heel bones pushing those two together. And then once you get that, you'll get an activation through. You feel that already, right? So she'll get a deep feeling of external rotation, activation through that back of the right hip, okay? Now using both heels, you actually get a bit of both, all right? But we're aiming for obviously the one on top, when she raises this knee, she's got to be thinking about, don't worry about how high you can get your knee or how fast you can do it or how many repetitions or anything. And with this one, there's no band on there. It's just unbanded for now because if we put a band on, if she's too weak, she's going to compensate using everything else. So to try and not just use her TFL and a bit of quad through here, okay? She's got to try and think, when I push my heels together, when I've got my core on, what I want you to do to raise my knee, I've got to try and squeeze my butt cheeks together. So if she imagines there's a credit card between your butt cheeks and you're trying to crush that, that gives her external rotation on both sides. So technically, this knee is going down, this knee's coming up. The only reason why it's not moving, because it's blocked by the floor. So she's doing bilateral external rotation with this exercise. It's just that this one is getting the movement so she'll burn out on this right one more than the left. So it's biased to the right. So when you're on your left side, the right side's biased. And she doesn't need to go higher than, you know, about there. So it's about maybe 20 degrees above her neutral line. So neutral's gonna be there. So where her hip, knee, and heel are all sort of in line. Okay, that's below neutral, coming up. There's neutral, she needs to go maybe 20 degrees above it. That's all she needs for now. Remember, these stuff is just low level exercises for people in pain dysfunction. It's not creating massive strength exercises for glute strength. It's to get people out of SIJ issues. So keep it low level, keep it sort of slow and controlled to try and get the maximum from brain to hip, all right? So when she gets that right, of course, adding on load with a band around her knees is gonna provide more strengthening work here, but it's gotta only be done once she knows you can get proper contraction through there. Now, go on to your back for me. Second thing I want you working on is a glute bridge. So we go from there's the external rotation part, then we wanna work on some hip extension. Now, 
With this one, what I wanted to focus on is trying to do not an articulated bridge. So meaning I don't want her lumbar spine bending into flexion before she comes up. She's got to keep that stable. Now, if people can't stabilize through the lumbar spine, they need to start working on lumbar spine stability exercises concurrently, but we'll pretend that she knows exactly what she's doing and she'll keep that nice and stable. With the feet, I would just come forward a little bit so they're not rammed straight up against the hips. So about that position there. So a bit more than 90 degrees, okay? Now, when she comes up, what she's gonna try and do is stabilize through her abdominals to try and brace there a bit. Now it's only a bit, so it's maybe 30, maybe 60%. Maxim. If she struggles with bracing, she can learn how to hold a Wii, which will give you their pelvic floor activation, which will help things out. And then when she's going to lift her pelvis, she's got to think, don't lift your pelvis. You've got to think, all you're doing is driving your heels through the floor. So as she drives her heels through the floor, her pelvis will hinge up at the hip joint. Okay? So at that point there, she's got to think, that's the hinge point. Where that great greater trochanter is, there's my hinge point. So she's going to drop down through that hinge point there. Okay, if you imagine I've got a sort of steel bar through there, that's where she's pivoting on. She's keeping this section from ribs to pelvis stable. And sometimes I like people sort of holding sort of one thumb on their lower rib, one sort of finger on the actual top of the pelvis there and keeping, say, keep that position the same all the way down and all the way up. So they're learning that this is almost like a concrete block through here. The only movement part is through here. Then you're going to isolate the brain to do glute work and hip extension, stabilizing that SIJ. Okay. Now they're using a bit of back work here, so you are going to get a bit of sling work down through the back. You're going to get that posterior chain working, which is going to help that SIJ. That's why bridges work so well with this, is because yes, she's doing hip extension glute work, but she's also stabilizing through the back, giving that connection there, which gives you that stability across from the ilium through to the spine, okay? So that's a really nice one to do. Again, you could add on a band. Now the band is just gonna add a little bit more load to the gluteus maximus in external rotation, a little bit of glute meat as well, because she's going outwards like that, okay? But again, only put that on when they're stable enough, all right? So band around the knees, either below the knees or above the knees, I don't mind, to give her that pushing outwards feeling to try and get a little more stability through there. Number three is trying to work on that one-sided pelvic stability when you're standing. So there's more of a functional thing when people are walking, standing, going upstairs, that sort of thing. For people at home, they might not have a Swiss ball, so we're gonna do this directly on a wall. So she's gonna stand on her left leg. This is doing her left side, okay? Her right knee is gonna be just bent and pushed against the wall. So she's gotta be a little bit away from the wall with that right hip. So that right hip can't touch the wall, okay? That you can't lean on the wall there. She's gotta be actually pushing away. Now at that point there, she can hold herself up. But what I want her to do is bend her knee slightly, keeping her knee directly over her foot, sitting her hips back is the crucial part. So she's actually gotta stay in hip flexion here. She's gonna stay in absolute neutral here. Now at that point, she's still not too bad. She'll feel like she's working her leg a little bit more. But what I wanna do with this right knee is pushing the knee into the wall in a lateral direction. That'll make her body counteract here. Okay, so she's, the more she pushes with her right, the harder work she's gonna work on her glute med and a bit of glute max and external rotation. If she sits in flexion, the deeper she goes, the harder those glutes are gonna work, the more she's gonna access, okay? She's gotta go there for about 30 seconds, that's probably enough, good. And then she has a rest, all right? So 10 seconds to start with, 30 seconds is probably your max. And when you get up to that maximum, you're trying to push as hard as you possibly can with the right to get as much work done here, without pain, of course, but it being in that weight-bearing position, all right? And that's very functional for her. It helps with knee problems, but for today, we're focusing on her SIJ pursuit. So it's gonna be really, really important that she gets that one done. Then she can move on to a dynamic squat. The last one we're gonna work on is a four point. Now this is where we use our oblique slings quite a lot. So if you come down into all fours for me. Now the key about this exercise is we're trying to use our posterior oblique slings. So we're trying to use from, if it's a right side SIJ issue, we're trying to use the right glute, posterior chain on that side, connecting across 
thoracolumbar fascia through to her left lat. Now the other side is going to be because her arms planted, crossing over, and her knees planted. So if she raises her left arm forward first, she's going to grab this. Okay, that's going to be her load for her lat. She's already weight bearing through her right side. She's weight bearing through her left on her knee. So there's a connection there. This one switches on her lat, so that's permanently on. So she's got a contraction of the lat this way, which provides a tension component here. All she's got to do now is do a hip extension with a bent knee on the right. So if she tries and slowly raises her right knee up you'll find that people start moving and shifting to try and balance. She's got to then compensate more, move properly here to keep this level, okay? Keep her foot in the right position here, so she's cocked at that foot there, and then think about that heel going up to the ceiling. So she's using glute, hamstring, doing hip extension here, which gives her that contraction through there like that. That's gonna help stabilize that SIJ joint. She's only allowed to go though as far, so come down again, She's only allowed to go as far as she, she can control in her lumbar spine. There's no point her doing those sort of horse kicks or extensions through the hip if she's arching her back all the time. So what I want you trying to do is being very stable here. This will require her really turning on her anterior core here, holding this stable, and just moving at that right hip. Okay, so she's getting movement contraction here, which will burn her out through that glute. She doesn't need load at this point. The load's on here, which is, she can handle. The load's on through there, and she just focuses on hip extension, giving her that stability contraction over that joint, which she so desperately needs. So that's what you do for that right-hand side, and obviously you swap it over, because when you swap it over, she will then work on stability on her right-hand side of load-bearing through the knee, which she also needs as well. So there's my exercises for SIJ stability. If you haven't seen the mobilization video, part one, check that out. See you next time.